Welcome back, everyone. A lot has happened overnight and early this morning, and unfortunately, none of it is good news. As you can see, the satellite imagery behind me here of a well-developed, powerful hurricane, Category 4 hurricane, uh, approaching and almost onshore of the southwest coast of Florida. So let's take a look at the radar imagery, and you can just see this well-defined eyewall now about to move on sh ashore um, in the Sanibel area. Uh, this, so if you're, if you're not familiar with, uh, this is Naples down here, Tampa is up here. And this little red box here, I want you to note this little red box here that shows up about halfway through the shot. That is an extreme wind warning. Now what does that mean? For many of you, you've probably never heard of that product. That's basically, that means that the eye wall and the extreme winds of a major hurricane are about to move on shore. So if you're in this little box area, so this is Cape Coral, uh, Boca Grande, Sanibel, um, you need to get into the interior of your home and begin to brace for a period of sustained uh, damaging uh, potentially devastating winds. Uh, do not venture outside at all. Do not try to evacuate at this point. You really have to get into the interior of your house and ride this part out. Uh, you can see the rain bands uh, also sweeping ashore and starting to impact uh, portions of, of Tampa and the I-4 corridor. Conditions are gonna start going downhill today. So get wherever you need to be up along the I-4 corridor and stay there. Don't be moving about the rest of the day as this system comes ashore. Now, let's go back to the satellite image. You can see the strongest onshore winds to the south here is where the peak surge is going to occur. That's where the storm surge occurs, where the winds are driving into the coastline. And this is magnified in this location because there's a little bit of a, a sort of a bay, if you will, which encapsulates or funnels the water. And that's why you see here on our, our forecast, um, I've been around for a long time, these are big numbers. I haven't seen numbers like this many times in my career. 12 to 18 feet in and around the uh, Charlotte Harbor area. Um, just a very devastating event starting to unfold, unfortunately, for the residents of South, Southwest Florida. This is the latest tide station. So this is measuring the water, water level. So this is measuring the ocean level, if you will. You can see the surge coming up quickly, already, already in major flood status, which is what this purple area denotes, and it's only going to get worse. This is probably only a fraction of what they're going to get in this portion of the state. So like I said, a really unfortunate and sad situation unfolding for the Naples area and portions of southwest Florida. The, basically the entire west coast from about uh, the, basically up into Big Bend down, uh, including the Florida Keys under storm surge warnings, uh, including the northeast coast also, northeast Florida and the St. Johns River. If you live on the St. Johns River, you need to be thinking about uh, taking action as well, taking a bigger picture out. Warnings now all up and down, the, so again, northeast Florida, St. Johns River, all of coastal Georgia, and much of coastal South Carolina. Uh, and we'll explain why here in a second with the cone graphic. It's a little hard to see, but if you see here, the orange denotes the size. We talked about how the storm would grow as it moved into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and it has. So it's not only strong, it's big, and that's the worst, the worst of the two. And you can see as those strong winds sweep sweep across the Florida Peninsula, the blue area is tropical storm warnings, but virtually the almost the entire state of Florida under some type of warning, save the extreme western panhandle. And then the storm moves slowly, I think the word crawls might be better, across the central Florida peninsula, slowly weakens as it gets inland, but then emerges back over the, uh, the Atlantic and then turns up into, back up into either uh, Georgia or South Carolina. And then again, you've got all that strong onshore wind to the east. We talked about the onshore wind, so think about the surge risk here. This is, there's a reason it's called the low country. It's flat and there's not much elevation there. So even a little bit of storm surge in these areas could be life threatening. You can also see uh, various, uh, there's a hurricane watch also issued for that same portion. Watch is conditions are possible within the next couple of days. I personally like this graphic to kind of help unpack everything because at some point there's so many warnings it's probably disorienting. The red, the red is hurricane warnings or damaging wind, damaging wind potential. And you can see as Ian cuts across the state, just basically slices across the state a large swath 
of damaging winds, down trees, down power lines, power outages, and roads that won't be passable for a long time. So again, get where you're gonna be, unless you're way down here. If you're inland around Tampa, I-4, get Orlando, get where you're gonna be and plan to be there for several days. And then you can see the various tropical storm warnings uh, up along the southeast coast of coastal Georgia and South Carolina. I don't want to diminish the rain either. A lot of, you know, everyone focuses on the, on the wind and the surge, rightfully so, as we talked earlier in this segment. But a line or a band of very heavy, heavy rain is going to develop along and to the north of the track where Ian cuts across the state. These are precipitation estimates or precipitation forecasts. The red is greater than 10 inches. The purple is 15. So basically a wide swath of 10 to 15 inches of rain. And if you're not familiar with those numbers, that is a lot of rain. And we are at the tail end of the wet season or the rainy season here in Florida. So the flood risk potential is high. And that's basically what I would take away from this graphic. Anything that is in this pink area or high, which is absolutely the I-4 corridor, is a high risk of very heavy rain that will produce flooding, flash flooding, impassable roads. I'm telling you, you just need to get where you're going to stay and plan to be there. We lose so many people after a storm because they get out and wander about. They drive into flooded roads, power lines might be down, they just encounter. I, I know you want to see what happened. I know you want to see if your house, your neighborhood is okay, but please stay inside until conditions allow you to safely move about. And then, and then also I want to note here, and notice the flood risk in coastal Georgia, South Carolina, Savannah, and Charleston, you're now at a moderate risk. And I want to explain this because since you're several days out from the onset, a moderate risk that far out in time is actually really significant. And if things continue to unfold, you could be placed in a high risk at a later time. So don't be too fixated that this purple here is only in Florida. I'm really concerned about the flood risk because also this will be co-located with the storm surge that we talked about earlier. Remember the onshore storm surge, then you have the rain. The rain tries to flow into the river, the river tries to flow into the sea, and it all just converges and creates a big flood mess and potential here uh, in South Carolina. Uh, we'll be with you all day to provide updates um, as needed. For those of you outside of the impacted area, you know, please be thinking about the people in this impacted area and be ready to lend them support, lend them help in the next couple of days. That is it from the National Hurricane Center.